The wait for Grand Theft Auto 6 is agonizing. Even though it's easy to forget considering the fifth title is still selling ridiculously well and hasn't really left the conversation thanks to GTA Online, it's been nearly six years since the last game dropped. Even for Rockstar, that's a long time between installments. And with no announcement looking imminent, fans have been left to speculate just what form the inevitable next entry in the franchise is going to take. Unsurprisingly, there have been so many apparent leaks and rumours doing the rounds over the years, ranging from the convincing and reliable to the outright outrageous. Others, however, are enough to spark fear about the franchise as a whole. Rumours that, if true, could take the world-conquering series down the point of no return, or removing the hyperbole for just a split second, at least result in a game that doesn't live up to over six years worth of fan expectations. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and this is GTA 6, 8 rumours we hope aren't true. Number 8. Multiple Protagonists, again. When GTA 5 introduced not one but three new playable protagonists, many fans worried that it would become a staple Rockstar would include across all of their games. Thankfully, despite early reports, it didn't make its way into Red Dead Redemption 2, but some rumours have suggested that it will return in the next Grand Theft Auto. The feature wasn't a total misstep, and for a single game, especially one with the narrative of GTA 5, it worked to offer a bunch of different perspectives on Rockstar's anarchic world. It also fractured the storytelling, however, and made the overall plot a little more meandering than it could have been, with each character's arc being limited for the sake of the expanded scope. A focus on a single protagonist going forward could benefit the storytelling massively then. Rockstar's previous titles have worked so well when there's a singular hero or anti-hero, and the detailed character work they're able to deliver, whether it's on Grand Theft Auto, Max Payne or Red Dead, is always a highlight of the experience. That's not to say you can't still have a huge cast. RDR2 proved that you can keep a single protagonist and still feature a bunch of compelling characters in major roles, but rather that they don't all have to be playable at the same time. Number 7. It will take more RPG elements from Red Dead Redemption 2. The way Red Dead Redemption 2 engrossed players into its world was one of its best features. You really felt like you lived in this environment, with the methodical mechanics being complemented by strong world building and the ability to interact with every single NPC you came across. Just because these simulation elements worked for that game though, doesn't mean they'll work in Grand Theft Auto. Not only were there a bunch of players who didn't enjoy the slow, immersive nature of RDR2, but GTA 5 has persevered for so long in part because of how accessible and fun it is to play. Likewise, some of the RPG elements from RDR only really worked in that context. Being able to interact with everyone was fine there because there were far fewer people populating the plains of the Wild West than in a dense, bustling modern metropolis. Of course, GTA can still focus on telling a mature story and use its mechanics to inform that, but both the distinct styles of RDR2 and the more accessible phone of GTA should still exist as separate entities. Number 6. Interconnected Cities from Past Games Return for a long time now, Rockstar have always mentioned how they want to extend the scope of GTA beyond just a single city. San Andreas took place across three fictional US cities, but the limitations of the hardware resulted in the developers pursuing bigger, more detailed single areas for future games. However, recent reports have seemed to all but confirm that the next game will indeed take place across a bunch of different locations, with both Vice City and Liberty City being accessible alongside parts of San Andreas. In theory, this is cool, and incorporating the maps of previous games into a sequel is something Rockstar is no stranger to, as most of the original Red Dead Redemption map is included in the second game, but it might be a wrong move here. As I know quite well, bigger isn't always better, and so far Rockstar have excelled at having detailed, realistic worlds that feel lived in. Where games like Just Cause strive for scale over everything else, including areas that reuse textures, architecture and layouts, every nook and cranny in GTA's world feels unique and memorable. By going bigger though, you risk losing that intrinsic part of the developer's charm. And then there's the issue of all of these locations being familiar to fans of the franchise. We've experienced San Andreas and Liberty City many times before, and while an upgraded version of Vice City could be more welcome, it would be similarly exciting to see a location unique to the series. Number 5. GTA Online will be far bigger Depending on who you talk to, GTA Online either killed or saved Grand Theft Auto V. 
Though it got off to a pretty piss poor start, the multiplayer suite morphed into its own phenomenon as the years ticked by, with Rockstar constantly supporting it with extensive free DLC packs. But this did come at a cost. Unlike other entries in the series, supporting GTA Online meant that the single player received no substantial updates or expansions, essentially alienating everyone who came to the game for the solo experience. Worryingly, parent company Take-Two have always said how they plan on doubling down on online's monetization aspects, and rumors suggest the mode is going to have an even larger focus in the next game. Though we shouldn't start getting furious about GTA Online supplanting the single player experience, a larger focus on the former element could tip the scales a little too much for comfort. These games have always had extensive single player stories, but their quality should never be compromised for a more ambitious multiplayer offering. Likewise, there's no guarantee that the next version of GTA Online will have the longevity of its current incarnation. Even now, Take-Two's monetization practices have alienated so many players, and the launch of Red Dead Online was a bit of a mess to be polite. If this element is indeed the focus of GTA 6, then its reception may not be as warm as the developers are expecting. Number 4. It won't release until 2022 there have been plenty of touted release dates for Grand Theft Auto 6 over the years, and the worst part is, well, they're all believable. We have no idea how long the game has been in active development. After all, you'd assume Red Dead Redemption 2 took up a whole bunch of Rockstar's time, which makes anything from a surprise release next year to 2022 equally likely. The latter date has been brought up a few times, though, with industry analyst Michael Patchter throwing it out there as the most probable window for the sequel. A release that far off could be a mistake, though, especially if Rockstar are hoping to deliver a game that can meet expectations. A 2020 launch date would make it nearly 10 years between installments, and with that comes an impossible level of hype. The gap between Red Dead Redemption and its sequel was 8 years, but that had the benefit of not being an established series and, although it is massive, it doesn't have the same earth-shattering appeal of a GTA. The wait arguably hurt that game as well, as while it was still well received and I personally loved it, the many delays sapped out a lot of the excitement, while it made fans closely consider just how much it changed mechanically and structurally in the 8 years of innovation between the two titles. After such a long wait then, GTA 6 wouldn't just have to be a good game, it would have to be the best damn game in the entire franchise to not be viewed as something of a disappointment. Number 3. The plot will be about building up a drug empire. Though it's far from confirmed, there is a vague synopsis floating around the internet which offers a little insight into how the game might be structured and what you'll be doing. It reads, quote, in the title, which will make you a kind of a drug lord, you will start as a small-time guy in Liberty City doing odd chores and small-time thefts, then eventually work your way to Vice City where you will join a famous gang. You will be tasked to look after a business in Liberty City until you are brought back to Vice City and soon become the drug lord. And that all sounds very… well, it sounds very GTA, doesn't it? Don't get me wrong, Rockstar might be able to spin this into something completely original and compelling, but at a glance, the narrative feels a little too familiar. With the repeated locations and a plot that could very easily stick to the formula previous games have already perfected, there's the worry that the sixth main release might not be bringing all that much new to the table. Number 2. A setting outside of America Every time a new GTA rolls around, the biggest question always surrounds its setting. And while Vice City is the one location that's remained in the conversation in regards to the sixth game, it's followed very closely by London. For years, a good chunk of the fanbase have wanted to see the franchise leave its American roots behind and tackle the UK's capital. After all, there has already been one older game set there. While that would indeed be novel and daring, and as a Brit, it would be undeniably cool to see a city I actually know in a big game like this, although I guess I have Watch Dogs Legion now, the heart of Grand Theft Auto has always been in its spin on American culture. Everything about this franchise lives and breathes Americana, with the entire ethos of the brand being built around this warped, exaggerated version of the American dream. Fortunately, the series probably won't be leaving the USA anytime soon, as the lead developers have similarly commented how the setting is intrinsically tied to GTA's themes and ideas. Number 1. There'll be a time travel twist Now, this is easily the wackiest rumour on this list. According to some incredibly dubious rumours, the next game will allegedly lean on sci-fi technology and throw players into a story built around futuristic tech. Not only will this include time travel, but teleportation as well. Now, this thankfully is almost guaranteed to not happen, but it's actually not entirely without precedent. 
In its later years, GTA Online went completely nuts with the weapons and vehicles it added into the game, giving players the option to buy things like flying cars and take part in activities on Tron bikes. Now, transferring those things over to the single player would indeed be a bad move, but who's to say these more outlandish features couldn't be present in the next iteration of the multiplayer suite? As long as they're kept there, I think I'm okay with it. So that's our list. I know what you guys think down in the comments below. How reliable do you think these rumors are? And would you like any of them to come true? Or are you as wary as I am? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.